Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the current egg shortage and what you need to do about it. If you're not like us fellow chicken owners, I'm also gonna be showing you later on what to do with your eggs during a shortage if you do not own chickens. Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for joining me today. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe, use the link in the description and you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So with growing concern about the food supply chain, one particular worrying issue has become a hot topic of discussion, the global egg shortage. Not only is this causing prices for eggs to soar or just outright not be available, it is creating severe economic concerns. It also makes it difficult or impossible for many people to access the eggs they need daily. So what to do if you have laying hens? You have the most opportunities here if you're fortunate to have laying hens. If you aren't sure what to do, these are some of our best pieces of advice to best benefit you and your community. Number one, incubate fertilized eggs for more layers. If you have a rooster in your flock, consider incubating some of your eggs, even if they won't be purebred, to increase your flock's population or give or sell to your friends and neighbors. No incubator, no problem. You can give away or sell your fresh fertilized eggs and buyers will be happy to go through the work of incubating them. Hatched chicks are generally worth more than fertilized eggs, but both are a fantastic asset during an egg shortage. Once the chicks are hatched, the countdown for eggs is on. It should take 16 to 24 weeks, four to five months before the pullets start laying their eggs. Number two, consider using fewer eggs or preserve them. Whether you're keeping all of your eggs for yourself or selling part of them for profit, it's wise to cut down on your own consumption. If you're selling eggs, you'll have more inventory for more profit, plus you'll be able to help more people. If you keep these eggs for yourself, it's still wise to use fewer eggs and preserve the rest if you can. Should your hands get sick, stressed, age, or die, you'll have more eggs for later use. And remember, chickens lay considerably fewer eggs during the winter when the days are shorter. If there is an egg shortage, you may be unable to make up the difference by going to the grocery store, so opt to store your excess eggs when you can. Now I'll talk about how to do that. But first, another option is sell your eggs if you have a surplus. If you have a surplus and a decent stock set away for later personal use and long-term storage, then it would be really kind of you to sell or donate extra eggs you may have to help out other people in your community. For one, it will help others and they will feel grateful. Still, you're also making new connections, potentially new homestead friends, and probably loyal customers for life. Doing your best to genuinely help others has its benefits for sure, like other people sharing their eggs with you, and on top of that, friends in general. Another thing to do is sell extra hens. Don't butcher right now. If you got too many hens, now is not the time to butcher the extras. Even if your hens are older, laying fewer eggs, or not playing nicely with the other chickens in your flock, it's best to sell or give them away. Unless you need the meat, find them a new home instead of sending them to the freezer camp. Other backyard keepers would be thrilled to add more egg producers to their backyard, especially in an egg shortage. Your old hen may only lay two or three eggs a week, so she's inefficient for you, but for your neighbor, those two or three eggs could be more than what they can find in the grocery store and well worth it to them to pay extra in grain costs. Now we'll talk about what to do if you don't have laying hens. If you currently don't have any laying hens, but you're willing to get set up to have have hens of your own here is what you should do to make the egg shortage more manageable number one buy hens or chicks from local keepers buy adult hens or day old chicks from local people farms or feed stores the adults will take about two weeks to start laying eggs again due to the stress of moving chicks must grow four or five months before they start laying eggs either buy all pullets or be willing to sell or butcher half or more of your chickens if you buy straight run chicks. Another option, number two, buy alternative egg producers like quail, ducks, geese, guineas, and emu. Chickens are not your only option when it comes to eggs. Good alternative birds include quail, ducks, geese, guineas, and emus. Quail are smaller, quieter birds that are generally okay to keep anywhere, even if you live in an HOA or even an apartment. Their eggs are smaller, but they start laying eggs very quickly, around one or two months old. Most quail lay close to 300 eggs per year consistently, which is better than many chicken breeds. Ducks lay eggs that are typically 50% larger than a chicken's egg, and these eggs are creamy and rich in good flavor. Some ducks lay 300 to 350 eggs per year, which is an astronomical number, 
especially considered the size of the eggs. It should take most domestic ducks six or seven months to lay their first eggs. Guineas are not great layers, but their eggs closely resemble chicken eggs. You can expect 100 to 130 eggs per guinea per year. If you've already have guinea fowl on your homestead, they can be an asset during egg shortages. The actual advantage of keeping guineas are their watchful eyes and noisy alerts of intruders, plus their exceptional insect eating abilities. If you have an issue with mosquitoes, flies, ticks, grasshoppers, or even smaller rodents and snakes, guineas will happily eat them and make your problems go away. Plus, they are low maintenance and don't tear up landscaping like chickens or camp out and poop on porches like chickens do. And lastly, emu is a particular type of fowl that takes a lot of special planning and facilities to raise more so than the other birds listed. However, if you're equipped for them, they are unique and fun to keep. Emus start laying eggs at 16 months and will lay anywhere from 10 to 50 eggs a year. While that doesn't seem like a lot, remember that it takes about a dozen chicken eggs to equal one emu's egg, similar size and weight. So by that measurement, one emu produces the equivalent of 120 to 600 chicken eggs per year. Geese are not ideal for egg production, but I felt I should still add them here and discuss why. First, geese are not prolific egg layers, like I said. Most only lay 30 to 50 per year. Most geese will be 9 to 24 months old when they lay their first eggs. They typically will not lay these eggs somewhere where it is easy to find them either, seldom in a nesting box. Many don't like the taste of goose eggs and geese mourn the loss of their eggs, but I figured I'd throw it in. All right, the third option you can do if you don't have laying hens is support local egg farmers. If you don't have any and are unwilling to raise chickens, it would be best to support your local farmers. Local eggs can be sold through physical feed store, bulletin boards, community face groups, Craigslist, farmers markets, the farmers app, or localhens.com. Be sure to ask your farmer if the eggs are washed, if they've been refrigerated, if you should keep their eggs on the counter or not, as opposed to the refrigerator. You can also inquire about the hen's diets, how they're managed, and whether they get free access to pasture. If this is your first time eating farm eggs, you'll be amazed by the stunning orange shade in the yolk and how much better the quality the egg are overall and of course if your farmer has blue green pink or purple egg layers you'll be delighted and lastly what you can do is reduce your egg consumption if you don't have any reliable source for eggs or worried that the shortage will worsen which it seems like that's what the news is saying consider reducing your egg consumption as much as possible and we'll talk about that here shortly but first let's talk about how to preserve your eggs for long-term storage even if you don't have the space to store a lot of eggs long-term, it's a great idea to familiarize yourself with these methods. You may be unable to keep extra eggs, but your friends and family might. These options are relatively easy to do, inexpensive, and don't take long. Number one, freeze eggs. Crack your eggs open and dump them into bags and bowls, cookie sheets, or even large ice cube trays. Eggs in bags and bowls are probably the most difficult to use when thawing them out because they're so blocky and it is difficult for them to evenly thaw out. Eggs frozen in individual ice cube trays and then placed into bags or resealable containers are much easier to thaw and measure. Lastly, the eggs placed on cooking sheets and frozen that way are easy to thaw and measure. They store very flat, which is space saving in general in your freezer, especially if you transfer the frozen eggs to freezer bags once they're solid. You can simply crack the eggs and dump them out without mixing so yolk and whites are distinct, or you can mix them up or get a more of a classic scrambled egg type texture. Number two is you could water glass your eggs or water glassing is what the method is called. This is a storage method if you wanna store eggs for a long time, up to a year or two. Submerge fresh, clean, but unwashed eggs into a jar filled with water and pickling lime, and then seal the container off. These eggs will look and taste almost exactly the same as brand new fresh eggs, which is why this is an appealing option for many chicken keepers. The texture does not change and they can be used the same way fresh eggs are used with no compromise. Option number three is dehydrate your eggs. Dehydrated eggs is relatively quick and easy to do and these eggs will last for five to 10 years if properly stored. Crack your eggs into a bowl and whisk thoroughly until they foam a little, then pour into the tray of your dehydrator. For many personal dehydrators, five eggs fit into one tray. Dehydrate for about nine hours at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The eggs will be very dry and flaky with no stickiness. After this, you can freeze them. Many people opt to blend the dehydrated eggs in a food processor or dehydrator. Hence, they take up less space in storage. And lastly, the most simple, is just keep fresh unwashed eggs on the counter. If you want your eggs to last longer without any special effort, just store them unwashed on your counter. They should last two to four weeks on your counter. 
If you keep them unwashed in the refrigerator, this can be extended to three months or occasionally longer. Washing the bloom off the eggs makes the shelf life shorter and you don't wanna do that unless it's absolutely necessary like you're about to cook it. Now, let's talk about how to stretch eggs in recipes. Here are some of the best tips I can come up with for making eggs last longer in your recipes. Add dairy products like milk, butter, heavy cream, sour cream, or cream cheese. You can add flour to egg-based recipes. You can partially swap eggs with oils. If you're using box mixes, especially for brownies or cakes, you can often replace the eggs with sodas. Instead of adding water, oil, and egg, try adding one soda can of pop instead. It's strange and impressive how well the baked goods turn out using this method. Opt for recipes that call for fewer eggs. If you look for recipes online, just look at the first few results, ingredients, before committing to a recipe to use. Some recipes will just call for one egg while others may call for three or more eggs. If you're concerned about your usage, take the extra few minutes to ensure you're using the most efficient option possible. Now that we've talked about how to stretch eggs, we're gonna talk about how to find alternatives and replace eggs and recipes while still getting great tasting food. Number one, vinegar and baking soda. Use equal parts vinegar and baking soda to replace eggs. One tablespoon of each should be similar to one large egg. This is most ideal for brownies, quick breads and cakes that are baked in the oven. Number two, oil, water, and baking powder. Mix one to half tablespoon of oil, where this uh, could be vegetable oil, canola oil, soybean, peanut, olive, etc. Mix one to half tablespoon water with one teaspoon of baking powder to replace one large egg. Number three, cactus. You can use the gel in the pads of cactus as a binding agent to replace eggs. Number four, unsweetened applesauce. A quarter of a cup of applesauce will replace one large egg egg in brownie cake or muffin recipes where baking is involved. Number five, plain yogurt. You can substitute one large egg with a quarter cup of plain or vanilla yogurt. If possible, beat the yogurt before adding to the recipe for better texture and blend into the recipe. This is best used for bars, cakes, and muffins. Another option is silken tofu. You can place one large egg with a quarter cup of silken tofu that is blended with water. Keep adding water to the mix until the texture is smooth. This will make the recipe really heavy, so use this sparingly. It's good for quick breads, pies, heavy muffins, and dense cakes. You can also use brown or speckled ripe bananas. You can swap out one large egg for a quarter cup of mashed or blended ripe bananas. This is ideal for sweet recipes like muffins and cakes because it adds a lot of sugar and sweetness. If you use more than half a cup, you may notice some rubbery texture in your baked goods. Number eight, flax seed and water. For this, just mix three tablespoons of water with one tablespoon of ground flax seed for every large egg you want to replace. This is a good substitute in recipes that are aiming for chewier or firmer textures. It's great for brownies, some cakes, and several breads. Number nine, vegan eggs. Vegan eggs are now an option that you may be able to find in grocery stores. You can cook, eat, and use them any way you would use your traditional eggs. Number 10, instant mashed potato mix. Use two tablespoons of instant mashed mix with a little water to replace one large egg wherever you need a binding agent. This is probably the best swap for savory style dishes. And lastly, canned tomato paste. This is not a binding agent, but it's another good swap for those savory, not sweet foods. Use two tablespoons of canned tomato paste for every one large egg that the recipe calls for. So the egg shortage is real and it's happening now. Now, if you have laying hens, there are things you can do to help conserve, distribute, and replenish eggs. If you don't have laying hens, there are still ways you can help reduce your overall consumption of eggs, help your community, and get eggs from alternative means. Everyone should at least know how to stockpile eggs for long-term use and how to cut back on egg use in recipes. If you found this video helpful, thanks for watching. Please be sure to check out this video over here. And with that, I hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.